Before you start working on that UI system for your new game, there's a few things you need to understand about how Unity's UI system works. I will be explaining the most important things game developers should know, but often don't know, about making user interfaces in Unity. I'm Chris Kaywell, and this is Unity in a Nutshell, the UI system. Unity's UI system is not the most intuitive thing they've created, and there are four principal topics you will need to understand to save you a lot of frustration in the future. These topics are canvases, rect transform components, the render order, and canvas groups. First off, let's take a quick look at canvases. Canvases are the place where all UI elements are located in the hierarchy and serve to group parts of your UI together. Your first canvas will be automatically created once you add your first UI element to the scene, and you can ignore almost all of its fields when you're just starting out. However, the one important field to understand is the render mode, which basically determines how and where Unity will render your UI. We've got three options. First off, Screen Space Overlay renders your UI on top of the screen, so changes in resolution or size of the display window will change how your UI looks. Screen Space Camera will render your UI on top of a camera in your scene instead, which means your user interface will be affected by changes you make to that specific camera. This also means it will only be rendered in that camera view, and no others. Finally, the World Space Render mode will render your user interface in the world, just like any other game object in your scene. Notice how you can now change the rect transform fields of your canvas when you use this render mode. These options are great, but we're going to stick with the default one, Screen Space Overlay, for this video since it's the most commonly used for simple user interfaces. Now let's take a closer look at the Rect Transform component. I'm assuming you already have some experience with transform components on a regular game object. Unity's UI elements instead use Rect Transform components, which are very similar but have a couple notable differences. First off, they contain anchors, which are most easily set via the Anchor Presets window. Anchors are how you tell Unity in what part of the screen a UI element is supposed to be. This way, Unity can properly position your UI even when played on different monitor sizes and resolutions. Does your game have a health bar in the top left? That UI element should probably use this preset. Are you making an FPS with crosshairs in the middle of the screen? Then the center preset will make the most sense. If you've never used UI anchors before, they can seem a bit overwhelming, but it's easier than you might think. Just make your best guess for each element, and it will probably be the right one. Now the most important thing to understand about Rect Transform components. Width and height versus scale. To understand this difference, you need to understand what a Rect Transform really is. Here's one of the best descriptions out there. The Rect Transform component is the 2D layout counterpart of the Transform component. Where transform represents a single point, rect transform represents a rectangle that a UI element can be placed inside. Because a rect transform represents a rectangular space instead of a single point, it has a width field and a height field for you to define the space's dimensions. This is a great way to size and shape your UI elements in relation to each other. Scale, on the other hand, changes the actual scale factor of this object and any child object. If you have UI elements with various scale factors, you may need to perform more complex calculations to get them to act consistently with each other. An example is an item that should follow the mouse when dragged. This calculation is easy if your scale factors are all one, but change those scales and things can easily get out of hand. If all of that was a bit confusing, I recommend leaving the scale of your UI elements at one unless the width and height fields aren't meeting your specific needs. That should be enough for you to start working with Rect Transforms, so let's now take a look at how Unity's UI Render Order works. Render Order is basically how objects appear in front or behind other objects. Higher in the Render Order means an object will appear in front of other objects that are lower in the Render Order. For Unity's UI system, this order is defined almost entirely by the scene's hierarchy. UI elements are rendered from top to bottom, meaning that the last item in the list will be rendered in front of all others. This means that the easiest way to change the render order of UI elements is to change their positions in the hierarchy. This can even be done dynamically with code, using the methods setParent, setAsFirstSibling, and setAsLastSibling. However, if messing with the scene hierarchy isn't an option for you, then you can create other canvases to split up your user interface. 
Any child canvas that you create will feature an override sorting option, which will allow you to manually set the render order of that canvas's children in relation to the rest of the UI. It's also worth noting that when using the screen space overlay render mode on your primary canvas, custom shaders will not be able to change the render order of your UI elements. So save yourself some time and don't try to solve UI render order via custom shaders. Finally, I want to briefly mention canvas groups, which can save you a lot of time and frustration if used correctly. The canvas group component allows you to manually set a few key fields for a group of UI elements, which consists of the current element and all of its children. The alpha field sets the transparency of the elements, and the ignore parent groups field allows you to override any values set by canvas groups further up in the hierarchy. These are both pretty self-explanatory, but the other two fields can cause some confusion. The interactable field is how components such as buttons and input fields determine if they are enabled or not. Turn this off, and all child buttons will turn gray and refuse input. On the other hand, the blocks raycasts option determines if the group can be detected by rays fired from things such as mouse clicks and drags. Notice how turning this off keeps me from being able to click the button, even though the button is still technically interactable and not grayed out. If it seems weird to you that these two options would be separate, here's a couple simple takeaways. If you can't click on some of your UI because other parts are blocking your clicks, bundle up those interfering elements behind a canvas group that ignores raycasts. If instead you want to keep your player from using an entire set of buttons, scroll bars, and drop downs, put them behind a non-interactable canvas group. And just so you know, canvas groups aren't just for groups either. It's also perfectly fine to use a canvas group on just one UI element, if it fits your needs. I hope this brief tutorial clears up some confusion and helps you create dynamic and intuitive user interfaces the right way the first time. Thank you for watching.